Hello everyone, my name is Nikoya, and this is the Arturia Microfreak. It is a hybrid digital analog synthesizer. Um, not really a whole lot to say about it, because right now it does not make any noise. So, check the obvious things. Uh, you know, our filter is open, our volume is all the way up, still makes no noise. I want to check that the keyboard actually works. So, you can see that the display is responsive to the keyboard. Uh, we can set different art patterns, whatever, um, but still no noise. So first thing to check after verifying, obviously, that we're trying to put out noise is whether the rest of our setup works. And so oh, actually, I forgot to turn up the uh, uh, audio on my speaker there, but you know, you get a uh, get another keyboard in and I'm sure I remember where the headphone out is. Hope it there works. You can also test it that way. But let me go into the output here. Well, get a lot of uh, noise on the output, but again, nothing. So I'll turn that down. So this is a not uncommon problem with this uh, with this synth synth with this synthesizer. Man, try saying that five times fast. I have seen people on Reddit and forums and everything complaining about a no sound problem with the Microfreak. And so today I'm going to show you uh, what the cause of that problem is and how to fix it. So uh, to show you the problem, I'm gonna open this up, start by unplugging it, although we're gonna be plugging it back in to demonstrate the problem. And then we have eight screws on the back. Now on my unit, these ones at the far back here nearest the ports are shorter than the four up here. And so uh, you wanna pay attention when you're pulling these screws out to see which ones are which length and make sure you don't get them screwed, uh, mixed up so that you don't end up with like screw threads coming through the top of the box, which is uh, not a surprise you want to surprise yourself with when you flip it back over. Here, yeah. two different lengths of screws there. All right, so that is all the four screws we need to open up. You can leave the rest of these on. These are just for the keyboard. And now, I wanna wiggle up at the front a little bit because sometimes this next section gets stuck down. And then, if you're lucky, and you remember to get all the screws out. Yeah, there we go. Back will pop right up. And then we rotate it forward like this so that we don't yank out this uh, cable here that goes to the keyboard. So we have this open here. We have the main board here, the front panel control board, and then of course the keyboard is underneath here. And what I'm going to demonstrate now is what the problem is. So if I grab my multimeter and we set that to DC volts, and we plug in the power and switch the device on. What we are going to look for is test point 31, 26, and 27 here. Now these are the plus and minus six volts for some analog circ circuitry over here that we're going to be looking at. And if we measure across this, we should see plus and minus six volts. So we are seeing 3.8 volts, which is not good on that one. And then we are seeing uh, negative 0.27 volts, which is even worse. And so this narrows down exactly what our problem is, is that the analog circuitry is not getting the voltage it needs to operate. So we'll switch this back off, unplug this again. And I'm gonna pull this board completely out of this uh, box here so we can take a closer look at it. Flip that up, pull the cable out, and six screws. Oops. Good thing I switched the power off. All right, with those six screws removed, you just flip the board up and we have it uh, free from the unit. So we'll set this aside temporarily. 
I want to make a complete mess of my desk here. And now we can have a look at this unit. So this is the way it sits in the unit here. We have the power jack, USB, MIDI, our uh, modular, our main output, our headphones. So over here is the uh, analog section. So this is where you're going to have your uh, VCA, VCF, everything, all the analog stuff. Uh, this right here is the actual uh, audio input output chip. Uh, there's a regulator here that powers it with 1.8 volts. Um, I checked this because this is obviously a uh, candidate for failure here that would generate no audio output. This was fine. Uh, this here is the regulator that generates a plus and minus six volts. So that's what we saw uh, not working. And that supplies, again, these analog chips over here. In fact, just these three chips, I believe. So that wasn't working, wasn't generating enough voltage. And if we actually set our meter to ohms mode, this is the flip side of those test points we just looked at. And if we look at, uh, let me see, we're gonna have the ground and the plus or minus six volts here. So that's 12.6 ohms, 12.4 ohms. That is not good. The other side looks a lot more normal. It is, uh, get a good reading there. Come on. It is like 40 kilo ohms, 42. So there's a capacitor charging on there. But 42 kilo ohms is you know, more in line with what we want to see. So now the question is, is this chip bad? And there's a short inside it. Or is there a short somewhere over here that is causing this? And that is what I got a thermal camera for. So we're going to fire up this thermal camera. And we're going to show you a few snapshots of this board with it powered on. So we're not sitting on anything conductive here. We're not going to blow ourselves up. Just going to switch this on. Got this takes ages to uh, start up. So we'll switch this on. Can you see that? Sort of, not really. I'll take a few snapshots and put them on the screen. So over on this side, we have um, a couple of linear regulators that supply the main CPU. And so those would be getting fairly toasty. I'll try to capture that. There we go. In here, we have the actual uh, regulator. I'll put a shot of that up on screen. And it is nice and toasty. And over on this side, we have the, yeah, that sort of bright spot there, not very bright, is the audio output. It's a little bit toasty, but it's actually working. And then over here is the chips that are actually being powered by the six volts. And so those are all just completely dead cold and icy. And so they're not, you know, uh, drawing extra power or anything. And I'll put that up on the screen as well for you. So that tells us that what's consuming the six volts isn't the problem, but what's producing it is. And so the unfortunate news here is that, you know, I could zoom you into that little chip there. Let me see if you can do that without making you completely nauseous. All right, so that little black square there is the problem. So up here we have our inductor. Inside of here is a couple of MOSFETs as well as some controlling circuitry. And the problem is that one of those MOSFETs inside of this chip is dead. And so um, you could try to pull this chip off and reflow a new one onto there. I'll put the part number in the description so you know which one it is. Uh, the problem though is that, you know, this is surrounded by components that aren't especially, uh, you know, heat sensitive or anything, but like that capacitor right there, that's like an 01, 005 capacitor. And if you accidentally knock that off the board, I mean, this is my like index finger here. I'm not holding it like above the board really far. Like that, that thing is absolutely tiny. Um, you can replace this, you can reflow this. You know, you're gonna be fighting the heat all through, that's waking way into this, you know, ground pad and everything, the ground fills around it. Ah, uh, it is just such a pain in the ass. And so, easier solution is just get a new one. So Arturia, as of right now, in the middle of 2025, is still selling these. They're still selling the uh, Microfreak as well, so I should hope these are still in production. Uh, they charged me uh, 65 euros, uh, convert that to American dollars and add shipping. It was about 75 bucks out of pocket, and this one works. And so, quite frankly, I don't want to deal with reflowing that one, and so I'm just going to put this one back in. So let's do that. 
All right, so we got a replacement board here and everything is all cool and groovy. So we're just gonna slide it right back in. Now, when I got my board, uh, some of the, um, some of the modular connectors were like slightly out of line. I had to reflow uh, the tip here to get them to line up properly with the back panel. Uh, as you can see, they're perfectly fine now. I don't know if this was just a one-off with this particular board or if these are just QA rejects that they send out to, uh, to the um, repair technicians. But uh, if yours happens to not align, you know, don't force it. Just check which of these ports is not quite lining up and just do a little soldering on your own. Uh, it's not difficult to do. It's obviously much easier than reflowing that tiny little chip. Now flip up the little locking lever and put the connector in. Uh, you'll feel it slide in and bottom out. Flip it down, it's in there nice and solid. So just to demonstrate what this voltage should have looked like, we'll go ahead and plug this back in and power it on. Put this in DC volts, power it on. And this time we have negative six volts and negative 5.9, which is, I mean, I'm not switching the leads. Obviously the center one is the ground, but six volts and six volts. That's exactly what we want to see. So reassemble this. I want to make sure you get the back panel slid into place correctly. And then again, on mine, the uh, longer screws were in this row. I don't know why, but they're just longer screws in this row, so. I wanna make sure you uh, pay attention when you're disassembling yours, as I said earlier. Sounds like it makes it sound to me. So I want to thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.